Namaste. Namaste. Well, I know we could have decided not to deal with the traffic because the traffic is definitely out there. We could have said, you know, Mercury's in retrograde, so maybe I'm just going to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of Mercury in retrograde, because I got caught up in traffic, and I also left my phone. So I couldn't even call anybody to say, hey, I'm getting there late. But I think everybody is in the right rhythm. And as the Ascended Master say, and welcome everybody that's on Zoom. This is a very, very, very important time. And it's the time, you know, at least in our culture, where it's hectic and busy. And there's a lot, a whole range of emotions going on in this time. And that's why traditionally you don't see it packed as usual, like with the spring or the autumn, because it's this time of year. But this time of year is also the season of great light. You know, and for those who, as the Ascended Masters say, show up, you have no idea how that ripples across the cosmos because we are that powerful as divine co-creators. And as you move along your spiritual path, you begin to understand the, the gravity of that, you know, that we are uh, what we believe to be. And so uh, coming in as what we always say, everybody here is a planetary world server, concerned about the planet, raising the frequency of the planet, bringing once again wholeness and oneness, not the sense of duality and uh, separation, but to bring that healing. And a lot of people out there may say, oh, you know, like, you know, they have those beauty contestants, you know, Miss America, whatever it is. And they at the end, they say, and world peace. You know, somebody <laughs> maybe jokingly say, oh, isn't that cute? And world peace. But no, we're real serious about the world peace. And I will say this before we get started. If it wasn't for people who are awake or awakening, okay, if it wasn't for those souls who have come here and volunteered to be here, I mean, clearly is a higher purpose. Things would not be as good as they are. And that's saying a lot, because things are not absolutely great. And we have a long way to go. But I just want to say to you, a lot of things, prophecies and things like that, should have happened a long time ago, did not. It did not. It did not in our timeline, because we have people holding the higher vision and shifting the potentials to the Christed timeline. And everybody that's here today, or whenever somebody hears this, because we are on YouTube and anybody can happen to come in, their energy is the same, please know that by your choice, because we are in this reality bite of where we have a choice, our choices matter. And we may not be able to perceive things entirely from our perspective and where we are, but I know in our life review later on, when you realize your choices and what impact it had, and particularly, you know, being in your authenticity and walking your path of light ripples throughout the cosmos. And I want to say it's a spiritual hierarchy. Of course, we have the ascendant beings and they've been anchoring light and trying to wake up humanity. They need us. It's not a one-way street. We need them, but they need us because we are the boots on the ground. We are made of the material of the earth. So we have the most impact, the more light that we can hold within ourselves. We are like antennas. So today, this evening, okay, we are literally containers and antennas for those higher frequencies to come in through us to the world. We are the ascension manifesting each and every one of us. We bring our planet with us and all of her life. That is the goal and that is why we show up. So with that, let me just say a blessing. Blessed are they who seek the light for light shall be given in greater measure. Blessed are they who give up the energy of light for they shall know the increase. Blessed are the children of light upon the earth, but theirs is the reward of the redemption, for the children of light are given the work of lifting the planet out of its state of darkness through the increase of their own vibratory rate as it emanates from their being into the ethers. 
as ye are lifted, you will draw unto the self that one who seeks. The child of light is thereby the servant of the Most High, El El Elyon. Amen, 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 and amen. We came to earth this time round to be part of a tremendous upliftment. We are likened to a rescue squad for a species that has lost its way while placing its planetary home upon a perilous course. We agree to take on the human form, experience it, and then awaken from the stupor. We are now rising once again to our God potential and showing the rest how to do it. Our final task is to unify as one and serve as an influential force field of light and transformation. This includes eradicating the malignant sinister programming that has controlled the race for eons of time. Our light, our love, and our intelligence is required in this moment more than ever before. And now, as we are here, we're going to anchoring our family of light, the higher family of light, or the expanded family of light, I should say, who are already here, but acknowledging them. Calling on the angelic host of Mikaelilu, Gabriel, and Uriel to protect the earth from the fallen lower energies of the lower heavens. In changing the military strategy of war, violence, hate, and destruction to be replaced with love, peace, and restoration, transformation of the hierarchies of the highest HaKodesh, the Ostes Arenas, through the trinitization of yod heh vod heh yod heh shin vod heh Shekinah, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, the Amishai, the family of light, together with the Lord God of hosts and the many ultra-triumphants, ultra-terrestrials, in sustaining balance and harmony and peace to the earth. To change the course of chaos into thy infinite way, with our heartbeats radiated with only pure consciousness thought forms connected with divine, spreading over the entirety of the earth, shalometh shalom ein sof, the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. And so that is our intention. And now we will formally begin. And I'll ask Reverend Annie, she will come forward and open up the corners. We're facing east. Energy, spirit of the east, face of the rising sun, birth and rebirth, the winds that bring new beginning and clarity, the breath of life, the place of enlightenment and illumination. We call upon the watchtower of the East and the powers of the East to be with us now. We invoke energies of the air in the three secret holy name of God. Oro iba a o zo te yo re vo te. We call upon Archangel Raphael. Guardian of the East, guide us and heal us. We call upon the Wings One, the Great Eagle and the Hawk. Teach us to fly wing to wing with great spirit. We call forth the Sliffs, Spirit Keepers of Air, Energies of the East. Join us now, assist us this day. Be here now, and so it is. And so it is. Turn and face south. <laughs> Energy spirit of the south, place of the noonday sun, the spiritual realm, the place of creation and inspiration, the spark of life, the fire within. We call upon the watchtower of the south and the powers of the south to be with us now. We invoke the energies of fire in the three secret holy name of God. O ye a te ye a ped o ke elohim. We call upon Archangel Mikael, Guardian of the South, 
Share with us your courage and protection. We call forth Saint Germain and the violet flame to assist us in change. We call the lion, the puma, Sekhmet, who fiercely protect those whom she loves. We call forth the salamanders, spirit keepers of fire, energies of the south. Join us, assist us this day. Be here now, and so it is. And so it is. Turn and face west. Energy, spirit of the West, place of setting sun, the emotional realm, the place of reflection and introspection, mysteries and transformation. We call upon the watchtower of the West and the powers of the West to be with us now. We invoke the energies of water in the three secret holy name of God. El. We call upon Archangel Gabriel, Garden of the West. We call forth Magdalene that we might know alchemy, kindness, and mercy. We call upon the dolphins and the whales and the playfulness of the altars and seals. We call forth the undines, spirit keepers of water. Energies of West, join us, assist us this day. Be here now, and so it is. And so, so it is. is. Turn and face north. Energy, spirit of the North, the place of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. The place of the grandmother, grandfathers, the ancestors, and the ancient ones. The place of abundance, prosperity, physical manifestation. We call upon the watchtower of the north and the powers of the north to be with us now. We invoke the energies of water in the three secret name of God. We call forth Archangel Uriyahu, Garden of the North. We call upon Isis and her expect of the warrior, the sage, the mother, the teacher, and the healer. We invite the energies of the buffalo and the bull. We call the gnomes, spirit keepers of the earth, energies of the north. Join us, assist us this day, be here now. And so it is. And so, so it is. is. Energy, spirit of the above, elements of ether. Father Sky, Star Nation, Elohim, Celestial Hosts, Archangels, the Angelic Realms, Divine Consciousness, Sky Being, Multidimensional Light Being, Spirit Guides, and our Ancestors for their wisdom and watchful guidance over our life path. We invite Nuit, whose body holds the stars, Great Spirit, you who are known by a thousand names. Spirit keepers, energies of the above, join us, assist us this day. Be here now, and so it is. And so, so it is. is. Energy spirit of the below, sacred mother earth, beloved Gaia, the sacred core, the depths of the underworld. We call upon the energies of the elements, the stones, the crystals, the plants and trees and all that walk, crawl, fly, swim, and all that be off and on the earth. Spirit keepers, energies of the below, join us, assist us this day, be here now, and so it is. So it is. Energy, spirit of the sacred center, the place of balance, sacred union, the within and without, oneness, Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, God, Goddess, Isis, Osiris, Magdalene and Christ, the Yin, Yang, the place of timelessness and transformation, the place of the void from which are born, to whom all things return. Spirit Keepers, energies of the sacred center, join us, assist us this day, be here now. And so it is. And so it is. The directions are called. The circle is cast. And we are now in sacred space. 
Thank you, Amen. 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 <laughs> okay, and now we're going to have the calling of the masters. So I'm going to ask Christoph and Mark and Haley and Jill to come forward. Oh, thank you. We now call in the angelic beings of tender masters and all beings of light. Sananda. Mother Mary. Mary Magdalene. Saint Germain. Afra. Kutumi. Sanat Kumara. Gautama Buddha. Maitreya. Dwalkul. Confucius. Kuan Yin. Melchizedek. Elijah. Serapis Bey. I'm in Bay. El, El Moria. Ramu and the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta. Enoch. John the Beloved. Leto. Saint Bernadette. Ilari. Meheb Baba and all Ascended Masters. Tot. Babaji. Metatron. Saint Michael the Archangel and all Archangels. Astar Command. The Galactic Federation of Light. All Saints. The Arturians, Pleiadians, Syrians. Adromedons and Altarians. All of our star family of light. Elohim. And all beings of light, I personally acknowledge. Amen. 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 Amen.
So next, um, Catherine is going to read our World Peace Prayer. And I just want to mention, um, for those of you who have been coming to the equinoxes and solstices, you know, this is a prayer that Reverend Richard uh, received. And uh, this is a prayer. He has a strong connection with Athena and uh, very powerful. So he has... Uh, moved to Maryland and we had a really beautiful party going away party for him last Friday. I want to say that on our Facebook page, Cosmic Center Spiritual Life Facebook page, he has uh he did a video, a heartfelt video. So if you get a chance to take a look at it, hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. The good news is this and he showed a picture of his mom. He actually oh. went there because to be closer to his mom and his sisters that need him. Um, but he is going to be, we are operating in the fifth dimension. So no longer this time and space uh, are barriers to us. So he's going to be doing a very powerful work on the higher understanding of scripture. And uh, that's going to be his ministry. And that's going to come to the Cosmic Center. And that will reach out a lot of people uh, that um, align in that path. So uh, we're very happy with that. So our beautiful Catherine now is going to read uh, the World Peace Prayer. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. The World Peace Prayer. We open our hearts to Mother, Father, God, because we know that the heart is the temple of divine love. It is the point of contact from which we communicate with God. It is with great love and humility your children call out to you, O Lord, we ask you shine your light into the hearts of everyone here tonight, and even more so those who are not, that we may honor you as the one collective heart, blaze as one sacred fire, and pray as one voice, united in compassion for our brothers and sisters across the globe. Father, Mother, God, we ask for your blessings tonight. We ask to bless you to bless until all beings are free from violence, oppression, fear, tyranny, and every manner of unkindness and misqualified energy. Let not one creature walk the land, swim the sea, or fly through the air without knowing the love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, compassion, and unity of the heart of God. May we remember all of nature in the domain of the Holy Spirit and mankind is also a part of nature and that man who is part of nature is responsible for the caretaking of the world and our, for our fellow man. To recognize the supreme divinity in all things, to heal and bless the land and to receive its abundance. And so with the indwelling cosmic Christ consciousness, let us look over the world and see humanity and all living creatures in the brotherliness, the brotherliness, hopeful and harmonious and holy alliance of mankind and nature, whose redemptive power shatters despair and engenders an age of a peaceful coexistence. Father, Mother, God, Allow this new hope to dawn upon us. 
Let it take its proper place in our hearts and become the wellspring of a progressive movement whose supercharged action in, the, in Christ overturns all obstacles, heals all wounds, unbinds all sorrow, and removes the heavy burden in all hearts of so many. May we all feel the new joy awakened by the great symphony of God's world. May it give rise to the constant aspiration and the qualities of virtue that make us great. A golden light is shining and love is eternal. We give for the energetic ripples of the rising sun of the Christ consciousness that flows through us now and always. We are grateful for the dome of the sky, the stars that shine forth in sparkling brilliance and the world we live upon. We appreciate the heartfelt joy, the song of birds and the greens of trees, the cry of a newborn child and the kindness of others. All things are bathed in the holy radiance of God. Mother, Father, God, we want to show our gratitude in this moment now for the future day when all men and women will receive and acknowledge the peace and love, strength, courage, wisdom that will be bestowed upon us through our faith in the cosmic Christ who has risen and dwells within our hearts. In the name of the Holy Trinity and all things divine and in the name of the I am that I am. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And now, if you look into the program, we're all going to say together the great invocation. A little background about the great invocation. It is really coming from Ascended Master Dewal Kool who worked with Annie Passant, and that was in Theosophy and the Ascendant Masters. They've always been around, but there's been different groups uh, that they have worked with. Uh, but the Great Invocation uh, was in the 1940s. Uh, we do say the original version uh, of the Great Invocation, but it's always been light workers who have always held the torch, no matter what, you know, to keep uh, the light moving forward. And so I always, always, I'm appreciative of all the light workers, you know, in the past that has brought us here, many of which we were, I'm sure, in past lives and here again. <laughs> but, you know, the Tibetans and that they just pray that pray wheel constantly so we can all start to wake up. So I always acknowledge that. So let's all together with this understanding, the gratitude in our hearts that we can be here today in the open and not have to be underground. Okay, there was a time when this couldn't happen. So we've come a long way because light workers have held a higher vision. Make no mistake about it. So with that, let's all say together the great invocation. Welcome From the point, the point of light within, within the mind of God, God let, let light stream forth, forth into the minds of men. Let the light descend on earth. From, From the, the point, point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose die on all the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and life work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the planet on earth. Now we will do the, um, we're going to do Reverend Robin, if she would come forward here now. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Welcome everyone. I hope you can hear me. I will try to remember to speak a little bit louder. Usually we have a mic. I don't generally speak so loud. But let, let's talk about what is this solstice? Why are we convening tonight? 
what makes it holy, what makes it significant. It's a cosmological event. Right now, the earth is the closest it's ever going to be to the sun, physically. However, because of the tilt of the axis, we are the farthest away from the shining part of the sun, the heat, light. And so it is a cosmological event that is affecting us here on earth and us personally on many different levels. I appreciate this. <laughs> I don't have that magnificent power <laughs> that Sharon Elizabeth has. So the solstice has been considered a significant event from the ancient of days because of its cosmological event. In all many religions, many different cultures, tonight is the longest night of the year. It is the darkest of the dark nights. And that has a significance. But let's talk about what that means in the darkest of the days and nights. We have the expectation that the light is coming. We know that the light is coming. This is the darkest of the nights that we're ever going to experience right now. And that makes it significant. And it also makes it holy because we have the expectation. We know that light is on the way. And that is also why you have Mithra, which is the Roman god that he was actually an Iranian god that the Romans celebrated. And they have Christ's birthday on the 25th of December as all, and also Mithra. The reason you're posed, really, you're posed at this beautiful access point this is the dark before the dawn. And you know the dawn is coming. And all the cosmological events around it are showing you that. And we have the faith, belief, and knowing the light is going to be there. Tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit more. The light is falling. It's coming. And so because of that, you have many different cultures celebrate the Yuletide. And I'm going to show you that today is the beginning of the Yuletide celebration. We've all often heard Yuletide. What is that? Why is that associated with it? So you, you have a lot of paganism symbolism that's overlaid on top of the Christmas holidays. And it actually brings it, it's more significant. And we can embrace all. This is a church, cosmological church. We embrace all religions, all cultures from all, all the times. So I thought, let's bring that a little bit. So give you just a little bit more, I guess, research on the topic. So Yule is actually a celebration of this cosmological event that we're experiencing tonight. This is the time when as the sun traces out a circular path in a west to east direction, relative to all the stars, the two points of the ecliptic farthest north and south from the equator, the plane which divides it into four equal parts. So that's why you have the two solstices and the two equinoxes. So now you have the darkest night. That's what the solstice is. One of those points. And that occurs now, December 21st, sometimes the 22nd. And it marks the start of the winter season. It is the shortest day of the year and the longest night. Many cultures celebrate Yule as one of the low points of the wheel of life, winter. And that at that point, there is something to celebrate, as with the low point comes the celebration of life and rebirth at the end. Doesn't this cosmological event tie into the birth of Jesus the Christ beautifully gone? And the avatar, as you can see. We celebrate his birth and life and the rebirth of the earth. You see, it's all tied together. Because God, our architect, creates all and is evident in all nature. Yule has been interpreted and is celebrated by different cultures in their own unique ways. These religions are often referred to as pagan. The Romans, for instance, celebrated 
sat Terlina, a feast for the god Saturn, who was the god of agriculture and harvest. Jubilina, a feast for the children and the birth of Mithra, who I spoke about, one of Rome's most sacred days. And it's celebrated from December 17th to the 23rd, you see? Then the birth of Mithra and Christ is both on December 25th. The Norse also celebrated Yule. This is the time it begins now. Starts on December 21st, all the way through January. And in fact, the Norse's Yule celebration is what is known all over Europe and with their early European pagans, celebrating solstice with Newgrange tomb and Stonehenge. And you'll see that even on the internet, all the people are gathering around Stonehenge with all of its energy in the vortex. You see, during tonight, there's energy there. Let's utilize it. The Scandinavians knew that the sun's return from winter signaled new planting and harvesting and a celebration of plenty. Now you see the cornucopia. Now, now does that make sense where you see that corn of plenty? That's from that pagan times. This meaning can also be overlaid with and can be symbolic of Christ's birth. The Yule is a 12-day holiday, starts tonight, and ends 12 days later. 12-day celebration, right? Annie's going to be speaking on her version of the 12 days. And we're going to have a beautiful Christmas Eve service um, starting at 7 o'clock for Christmas Eve night. So let's just talk a little bit about some of the things that we utilize today during this Yuletide celebration and why we might do it. Evergreens were cut and brought indoors to symbolize life, rebirth, and renewal. They were thought to have the power over death because their green never faded and they were used to defeat or hold back death and destruction. Because of their strength, they were also believed to encourage the sun's return. That's what the solstice is, the light coming, the sun is coming, warmth, planting, harvesting. We have the Yule tree. It is a pagan condition, uh, tradition. It's representative of the tree of life, the world tree among all the early pagans. And it was decorated with gifts that people wanted to give them their gods. The Yule Log. The custom of burning the Yule Log began with the ancient Scandinavians who burned a huge log felled from an ash tree to honor their god Thor. And in the Celtic tradition, a continual, continual hearth fire was kept to prevent spirits from entering the home. In order for the fire to keep burning, a large oak tree was felled and brought into the home where the tree was placed drunk first into the hearth. With the last remnant set aside to burn with the next year's fire. It was also believed that the longer the Yule log burned, the faster the sun would come to warm the earth. Does it, I mean, can you start to see some of these traditions and we never knew how they came about, right? With the Christians now, now you see the paganism, the Norse. How did the Christians overlay it? The Yule log came to symbolize the battle between good and evil. And as the fire grew brighter and burned hotter, and the log turned into ashes, it symbolized Christ's final and ultimate triumph over sin. So now let's talk about Christmas holly. Holly, which represents the masculine element, was often used to decorate doors, windows, and fireplaces. Aren't we doing that right now? Yes. Because of its prickliness, it was thought to capture or ward off evil spirits before they could enter a home and cause harm. The holly leaves, symbolic of the holly king, represent hope, and the red berries represent potency. How about mistletoe? Mistletoe, which represents the female counterpart element, also holds much importance as it was used by Druid priests in special ceremonies 
during the winter solstice. They believed that its green leaves represented the fertility of the mother goddess, and its white berries the seed of the forest god or oak king. Druids would harvest the mistletoe from sacred oak trees with golden skiffs, and maidens would gather underneath the trees to catch the falling branches, preventing them from falling to the ground. For if this was if happened, it was believed that all the sacred energy in the plant would pour back into earth. So the mistletoe represents energy, captured energy, do you see? The branches and sprigs were then divided and distributed to be hung over doorways as protection against thunder, lightning, and anything evil. Now we can see that. And now we have, we kiss into the mistletoe, right? So I just wanted to go over some of those. I'll do the candles and the elves, and then we'll just have a, a beautiful um, ending to this. We always have candles. Candles were another way to have an internal flame within the home. They symbolized the light and warmth of the sun and were used to chase away evil spirits and lure back the returning of the sun. The Christians, the return of the Christian sun, Jesus. Can you see how they both now correlate? Bells. Bells were often rung during the winter solstice to drive away demons that surfaced during the dark time of the year. They were rung in the morning as everyone began to wake to chase away the dark days and herald in the warmer, brighter days following the solstice. And then we'll just do elves. Elves first became associated with Yule because the ancients knew that the spirits that created the sun inhabited the land of elves. By including elves in the Yule celebration, the ancients believed that they were assuring that the elves' assistance in the coercion of the sun to return to warm earth again. So now we start to realize how this is a celebration of many cultures and how they all tie in together in today's celebration. I just want to leave you with the fact that we do have the expectation of the light. We know what's coming. We hold that light. And we have the hope and the faith and the knowledge of true knowing that light is coming and we can be that light. And as Sharon Elizabeth says, we are the ascending light. And that's the holiest of nights tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Robin is our great researcher. <laughs> And uh, I think that just really reaffirms that, you know, it's all one. Separation is a intended, intended, false narrative. Because if you go into exactly what Reverend Robin has just discussed, and you look at all cultures all around the world, they basically have many things that are in common because it's part of the humanity it doesn't matter which culture or what part of the world is one humanity now i would say those what i call the counter forces trying to keep us in the energy of separation you know i think that one major paradigm shift for humanity i know for me was when we were able to see the earth from the perspective of the moon. That was a big deal in recent history. We didn't go to the moon yet. So yeah, I'm that generation where there was a picture, I actually have it in my office, where you looked at the earth from the perspective of the moon. Now you could look at the earth from the perspective of Mars <laughs> and we're just a dark light, like all the other lights. So what does that do? That has to bring in like, wait a minute. Okay, um, the sun does not revolve around the earth. Uh, and that was a program. And if you didn't go along with that program back then, you would have been tortured and killed and great minds. And that's where you kind of had the separation of science and religion. That's what I kind of said, like, wait a minute, something's not working over here. But this is what I love. And that's why I like to say we are, 
um, the, uh, the, the manifestation rising. We are the manifestation rising because it has to move in that direction. How quick or how slow it is uh, depends on us. I'd like to speed it up. I think everybody would like to do that. And so we can come into a world that does not have the suffering and all the things that are going on, which we are all well aware of. So yes, it's it's all one. Thank you, Robin. Right now we're going to do a very we're going to do the um the Gabriel Divine Love, and then we're going to do a powerful meditation. And I would ask if those lights can be turned. These lights can be turned off when we do that, and these lights off. But first of all, let's start with Gabriel Divine Love. Let us all say that together. Oh, let's turn that off. The oh, oh, I have it here. I got used to it. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody else that needs it, it's good. <laughs> Let's all say together Gabriel's Gabriel. divine love and golden light invocation. I invite Gabriel. the divine love and golden light active in the Christ consciousness to flow gracefully through me and anchor upon the earth. I Ask for an awakening connection within my DNA to divine love, compassion, and light from the highest source to the 12 strands of DNA within me, creating the full helix of light that activates my 12 chakra systems. I ask my soul's alignment to all divine love and light that I can receive for the good of my evolution and the evolution of the earth at this time. I invite the assistance of the angels, archangels, masters, and all beings of light who work for my awakening to be with me in this process. May all beings awaken to their divine potential and bring the presence of divine love into their hearts. May ever more grace flow through us all to bless this planet. May the earth be honored in a new way that allows our beautiful planet to thrive. May every heart feel the gifts of this loving presence within them so peace may prevail on earth. Thank you, God, for this and all our blessings, and so it is. Take a deep breath and center. And know that we are in this holy, eternal now. All that is really needed are those. It doesn't have to be the masses of people, but those who can hold the higher light quotient, the whole the light of holy and as we do, we ignite others and others and others until there's a blazing flame that pierces through the darkness of separation, fear, and ignorance. So today, through the alignment of light created through the energy of the sun, the moon, and the earth, as the earth passes directly between the moon and the sun, we glimpse a reflection of the divine father, sister, and mother archetypes, respectively, allowing us to potentially heal earthly family relationships in this configuration of reflected light. We are further invited to travel into the heart of the sun, overlighted by Helios and Vesta and to experience the ascension seat and healing chamber of light within the solar core through the cosmic ray of solar service as it streams the Christ light onto this sacred earth. We are offered an opportunity to clear karmic timelines 
and mm -hmm. truly find a better balance of love and empowerment within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, mm -hmm. through the ascension seat mm -hmm. and beautiful copper gold flame, copper mm -hmm. gold flame of light, mm -hmm. we are offered an opportunity to truly experience our own inner feminine and masculine archetypes of light to bring balance once again. I align with Mother, Father, God, my I am presence and all the beings of light from on high that I personally acknowledge. I now call upon the overlighting of Helios and Vesta to take me into the ascension seat and healing chamber of light within the sun and solar core. I am now taken in an external Merkaba, vehicle of light into the sun. Well, let us take a moment and visualize and see our solar logos, our sun that brings warmth, that brings life. And now we come into the ascension seat of the cosmic ray of solar service. As I enter into this ascension seat and healing chamber of light within the sun in soul consciousness, I am surrounded and see this clearly in your spiritual eye. Surrounded by a beautiful copper gold flame of light. As you think it, so it is. As you visualize and see it, so it is. And as you see this beautiful copper gold flame of light, by the power of your own God-given power of visualization. Through the embrace of Helios and Vesta and surrounded by my family and friends of the light and all beings of light from on high that I personally acknowledge, I now clear remnants of genetically inherited patterns. I release myself of that now. I release and clear now karmic patterns and old soul contracts through this healing chamber of light and the copper gold flame of light. I do this for myself and I do it for the earth and all of her life. I now rescind any and all vows taken in this lifetime or any lifetime, parallel realities and dimensions and all incarnations for all time, space, and dimension, I now declare these vows null and void. We are ready for the rising sun, a new day and a new dawn. I now ask for the healing of my earthly relationships. As I forgive and love, letting go of any anger, resentment, betrayal, and other issues I may still be holding onto that are preventing me from truly seeing my magnificence as this master being of love and light. I now experience the activation of the Kundalini and tantric channels within this safe and sacred space, monitored by all the beings of light from on high that are assisting me now as I step into a deeper level of empowerment and love. I now experience the merging with my divine masculine and divine feminine archetypes of light, finding my voice, finding the expression of my true self in this essence of unconditional love. I now merge with my I am presence, taking on these key codes of light with the focus on manifestation, the primary quality brought through from the cosmic ray of solar service and heart of the sun. I remember that I am a powerful co-creator and a powerful manifester. 
as I expand into my I am avatar blueprint of light, as I trust and surrender to the divine, I am guided with joy, love, and abundance in my service work and in my life. I now request this copper gold flame of light be activated within the hearts of all humanity and within the cosmic law of free will. So together we may experience the amplified frequencies of love, wisdom, and light. I now experience myself connecting into the crystal heart of Mother Earth, grounding and nurturing, supporting and loving as I feel my connection to all life now through the unity grid of light and the amplification of the sun and moon. I am a master being of love and light. I am a keeper of light. I am a child of the sun. I am that I am. Amen, 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 and amen. And what we're going to close with is um powerful, powerful name of God. And for those that are new, uh, we work with the names of God. Um, you'll find the 72 names of God. That was with the Moses and the parting of the sea. And the idea behind that is really a mantra or a sound or a vibration uh, that can absolutely change in frequency and recapitulate an environment, which is what Moses did, you know, parting the sea and many other things. So the idea of abracadabra or open sesame, it comes from that uh, background of these sacred words. And these sacred names that we call as close as we can to the original Adamic light language um, is five sacred languages on this planet. Hebrew being one of them, uh, Chinese, uh, Tibetan, Sanskrit, and Egyptian. Those are the five sacred languages in this planetary thing. So uh, just for uh, the Western mind, it's just a little bit easier to do the Hebrew uh, way, but any of those other four are, actu are actually right. And we're going to be doing the Sanskrit actually on New Year's Day, which I'll make announcements, going to be a whole uh, mantra for prosperity. Lakshmi Ganapati and there's going to be a kirtan here, and that is used in Sanskrit powerful language of Sanskrit. So that's going to be Monday, a New Year's Day at seven o'clock here. But right now we're going to do Yahweh Shalom. This is very powerful. I want to mention to everybody here, we do not advertise it, but we do do the names of God on Thursdays as a rule. Um, we may have a new schedule for 2023. I'll speak with Judy. We're going to figure it out, but we do do those names of God and why it's not advertised is because it is that powerful. It is that powerful when you use it on a regular basis. And uh, for those of you that know that. So I want to close with Yahweh Shalom where you have a, a nice melody, uh, which um, <clears throat> Liba is going to remind us how to, how to do that. But I want to say uh, this about this first. It is Yahweh Shalom, Yahweh Shalom the Father's name of eternal peace. As emissaries of light, we bring the holy names into all aspects of life so that life is blessed with peace and with a holistic music from the dove. The language of the thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers beholding the same Father, Yahweh. And of course, the dominions and thrones and principalities we're talking the higher angelic realms. And they talk about the music of the spheres. You hear about the music of the spheres. Uh, some people have glimpsed it or heard it a bit. And these are these celestial beings that bring these vibrations out. When we start to align ourselves with these kind of tones and these kind of uh, vibrations, we are aligning with the higher uh, hierarchy of these celestial beings. 
And sometimes you'll see like a small choir and they're singing and they're singing these sacred names. And all of a sudden it sounds like a full orchestra. So people have experienced that. So very powerful. So um, this is the highest concept of expression that sustains the greater universes. And when the earth partakes of this sacred expression, we're talking Yahweh Shalom, a new mantle is given and a new species is evolved out of the ashes of the phoenix. A new humankind arises, clothed in a body of light. When we fully partake of the intensity of this divine expression, we release the coordination it brings between the living hierarchy in the heavens and the living family upon the earth, coordinating peace and preparation for all nations. We become the singers of life and singers of peace, working with the highest nature of life, harmony and oneness. As we do this, visualize the dove descending with the olive branch of light upon the four sea pods of creation mm -hmm. to give the power of co-creation and co-participation with the office of the Father. And through this peace, the seed forms of multiple universes begin to open before our eyes. O oh, Yahweh Shalom, bless us together in peace. For by thy light, of thy law of life, the peace that reconciles us even with our enemies is manifested. <laughs> Yahweh Shalom, 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 Yahweh Yahweh <laughs> Yahweh 
And just know that as you put forth the intention, as you walk on your path of light, doesn't matter if other people understand it. Doesn't matter. I have to be, in fact, we're the 1% of the 1%. Be your authentic self and whatever pulls you. Your soul will pulse you as to where you are, what you're supposed to be. And that those of us that have a very specific mission, we've sensed it for a very long time. And if you have that calling, it's important for you to be courageous and to be your authentic self because we're not crazy. The world is crazy. <laughs> That's what's crazy. It's the world. Okay, so let's not, not be fooled. Let's not be fooled. Okay, <laughs> we're not crazy at all. <laughs> and how can you be sane in a crazy world? Okay, so we're out of the... Slipping out of the matrix here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, there's a whole big story over here. Okay. But um, one of the things I could say is that these are what the ancients did. 
and what you've spoken about. And when there was a time of peace and harmony and balance and all of that, those kind of worlds exist. You know, this one is a little wonked out and we're trying to kind of get it back. And guess who said we're going to do it? <laughs> us. Us. And no matter the challenges, and nobody said it's a walk in the heart and a walk in the park, but we have it within us. When we activate the true power we have within ourselves, that's the thing. The best kept secret is that we mm -hmm. are somehow not worthy enough or smart enough or all of that. No. No, there are those powers that be that want to keep us thinking that way. False narrative. And like, wait a minute, we are come from the highest aeon. We hold the similitude of the divine. We have to remember that. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not less than. That's not the program. And then you start to wake up. And the more we wake up and start making those decisions, being our authentic self, getting a mess. I just started blogging. Like I said, I don't have any time. I don't have that much time. But I realized that was a program. I don't have enough time. I just caught myself and said, wait a minute, I have all the time. I have all the time to do whatever it is that's your dharma that you're to do. You'll be given the time, the strength, and the ability to do these things. So I just want to acknowledge everybody online and in person that how powerful this day is. Robin just described what this was. Now, how many people are out there shopping and running around and going crazy in traffic and going through those 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 goals kind of things, right? There, there's a lot. But then you say, this is a priority. I got to step out of that and align with this. Your life moves with grace and ease because mm -hmm. you're no longer vibrating to the false narrative <clears throat> so that you are vibrating to a higher frequency. And no matter what's going out there, you maneuver life through grace and ease. But with that too comes the responsibility of showing up and coming as much as you can from the higher heart of compassion and unconditional love. So with that, I want to say this has been a very powerful event. Everyone that's here, your voices have been heard. There have been gatekeepers like falling asleep and waking up and like, where's that coming from? Oh, look at that earth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this, this consciousness down there that's coming in. So we're doing many things. I've been told that we live open new portals and gateways of light. We literally open them up for more light to come in. We do some magnificent things that we don't have a clue, but we just trust what it is that our soul urges us to do. So I want to say that, first of all, if um, you don't get our newsletter, because we have some amazing things that are coming up, and this is important, uh, that we have uh, for the next couple of times. We're going to have our Christmas Eve Christmas Eve event that's going to be on uh, December 24th, which is what? Mm -hmm. On Sunday? Sunday. Okay, I don't even know. <laughs> on the 24th, so, uh, a beautiful, beautiful um, candlelight service. And it's going to be hot cocoa and, and cookies. And cookie. And, and we and have and cookies. Cookies, cookies and, and, and a harvest. And, a, and what we have is going to be amazing. You want to come to the Christmas Eve. Get your shopping done. Okay. <laughs> you want to come to the Christmas Eve uh, thing. It's the, the family of light here. And if you're new here, we welcome you. This is the family of light. Uh, we understand you and everything you say. So if you can be your authentic <laughs> self, we understand. So that's going to be Christmas Eve at seven o'clock. With the blessing tree. And, and the blessing tree. Thank you. Why do we have this here? This was so powerful. We do do the names of God. And this is for anybody, but it's particularly for our loved ones who are on the other side of the veil. They do this frequency. They know when energy is being sent their way. So I put, you know, my mother, my father, and some family members, I've written them up. We asked us for a minimum donation of $5, but, you know, if you can't, that's okay. Uh, you would just come up here. We'll be here this evening to do it. And you just write their name on a white ribbon, and it's tied to the tree. And on Christmas Eve, their names will be called. So that's mm -hmm. going to be Christmas Eve. I also want to mention that January 1st, We've traditionally always had the chanting for Prosperous New Year. We're going to do that again, but it's now enhanced. 
our wonderful Dr. Raj, who has always done that. We do do the mala beads and we do do the mantra for Lakshmi and Ganesh. Lakshmi and Ganesh or Ganapate is the Indian um, uh, gods uh, with a small g uh, that is in 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 charge of that frequency of prosperity. So that's why they do the mantras for that. And I know Ganapati has removed all obstacles for me. That's what he's known to do is to remove obstacles. He most certainly did that for me. And we're going to have Kirtan because it's going to be a, a gentleman by the name of Vishuddha. Vishuddha is going to do a Kirtan. So it's going to be so much fun mm -hmm. on January 1st. What a great way to bring in the 2024. And what time is that? And that's at 7 o'clock. That's at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mention, if you run into people, who are having a hard time because <clears throat> this is the time of year that some people are really struggling. You know, a lot of times it's the first time holiday that a loved one might have passed in the year and they're not, you know, here now. And just a lot of times there are people that feel alone or may not have family. There's a lot of things that are out there. So we do have a spiritual counseling for the holiday blues. Um, I just heard there's somebody that, you know, did something I guess they were that depressed, you know, not on Palm Avenue. But at any rate, there are people who are suffering with that. We try to hold the light for everybody. But if you come across someone, please let them know. And this this counseling is donation only. It's not a charge. It's a donation. And that's with Reverend Nancy. <clears throat> if you run into anybody who is struggling in that regard. And um, let's see here. Um, our newsletter, all you have to do is go on to Cosmic Center Spiritual Light uh, page. And on the bottom, it has where you can sign up for the newsletter. And we have some cookies and stuff mm. over here and from punch. Susan and Tara. What's that? <laughs> punch, too. Punch and punch. Yeah, we have. So let's go, let's mingle, let's have some holiday cheer. We have our donation basket over there. You know, we do have a donation also on our website, ccosl.com forward slash donation. We appreciate that. We are having a special end of year fundraiser. So um, uh, if you see that, you could go on our Facebook. Uh, you'll see that there. And um, we appreciate you all so much. And we will see you. Namaste. 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 Namaste.